G'day, I'm Peter Fritz, and in this week's video, I'm gonna go through what I believe are the five key technical elements of your camera that you need to master if you wanna get good at photography, particularly landscape photography, because each of these five things can have a dramatic effect on the results that you get. Now, there are plenty of videos around on the exposure triangle, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, but I think there are more than three key technical elements of using your camera effectively, and the other two are focal length and focus point. So what I'm going to do in this video is demonstrate as quickly and succinctly as I can the impact of using different apertures, different shutter speeds, different ISOs, different lenses and different focus points and also the explain the influence or the direct impact that each of these things have on your photos as well as the indirect, indirect impact that they have on the other four elements of your camera. To demonstrate these different camera settings to you, I decided to head off to a gorgeous location about an hour northwest of my house called Mount Macedon. Now fortunately this is a weekday so I don't expect there to be many people here at all. I'm driving up in my recently converted Nissan L Grand which I've turned into a camper van with off-road suspension and this is the first time that I'm actually driving it in some reasonably challenging off-road conditions. It was quite wet and slippery as you can see but really the van equipped itself beautifully on these uh, fairly narrow and slippery mountain trails. The uh, suspension and the tyres doing a magnificent job. So we arrive at a clearing uh, just near the top of Camel's Hump off to the side of Mount Macedon and uh, let's go through these settings together. Okay, so to demonstrate the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, uh, as well as the focal point, I'm going to use the same lens for everything. I'm gonna use the RF 50 1.8, cause that'll give me a good range of aperture. Um, plus I'm shooting into a dark forest here, so that'll give me the ability to shoot uh, at high ISO to demonstrate the, um, what that does to an image. Uh, and then for the focal length, of course, I'm gonna swap out to different lenses. This one's got lovely shallow depth of field with the tree in focus and most of the other elements out of focus. At f8 it becomes less clear what our eyes should be focused on. At f22 almost everything's in focus which is kind of boring, plus keeping the shutter speed at 2 50th of a second meant bumping the ISO to 32,000 so look at that digital noise, it's horrible. At 500th of a second, the leaves are pin sharp, no movement at all. There wasn't much of a breeze here, so at 60th of a second, there's only a slight softening of the leaves. However, at two seconds, there were a number of gusts of wind and it's clearly evident here in the movement of the leaves. Shooting at 100 ISO, and in this case F2, yields very clear detail in the leaves there is no visible digital noise or grain. At 1600 ISO, this time at f2.8, there's a slight introduction of grain, but again, on something like a full frame mirrorless camera, it's bugger all. However, once we get to stupid high levels of uh, ISO, in this case 51,200, the uh, grain is unavoidable. The digital noise is everywhere. Focusing on the foreground at f2 yields beautiful soft bokeh in the background, something that most of us love. Focusing on the midground throws the foreground and the background out of focus, but not by as much as the first image. And focusing on the background only creates an interesting look where the eye is drawn in to the subject in the background. At f22, most of the image is now in focus, but we also have motion blur thanks to the two second exposure. Okay, now we're gonna switch out lenses. First off, we're gonna go with the uh, 14 to 35, and we're gonna shoot at 14 and 35 mil, and then we're gonna to switch to the 70 to 200 and shoot at 70 mil uh, and maybe 100 and 200, and let's see what kind of a difference that makes. All right, so let's get this 50 off. Let's get that ND filter off. Now, speaking of ND filters, of course, there are a gazillion other technical things that. Um, you know, you can work on with your photography, but without a doubt, these are the five most important ones. Things like neutral density filters are, you know, useful for specific things like 
getting your shutter speed down nice and low by effectively putting sunglasses on your lens, making it darker so that you need a, a lower shutter speed. Uh, for things like uh, blurry waterfalls in bright sunlight, uh, when you're shooting video for getting the shutter speed down to, to what you want, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're just doing stills and we don't want to complicate it with things like this. So now we're going to shoot with 14 and 35 mil. Shooting ultra wide like 14, 15 or 16 mil gets a lot in the image. Do you really want all these things in your photo? For this particular subject, 35 mil makes a lot more sense and provides a more pleasing composition. Okay, and now we're gonna try the good old 70 to 200. Definitely my favorite go-to lens these days. Um, well, it's a toss up between the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400, but I just like how bright and sharp the 7200 is. I mean, the 100 to 400 is very sharp, but the 7200 is a little bit brighter. It's got a uh, it's got a faster maximum aperture. In other words, you can open up the lens to let more light in because it goes down to f4, whereas the um, the 100 to 400 I think is f6.3 to f8, depending on which focal length you've uh, got it set to. All right, so let's try that one. Seventy mil is actually quite a pleasing focal length for this composition, I reckon, especially if I'd moved a little to the left. This is what extra thirty millimeters of zoom looks like on this image. And at two hundred millimeters, we get some really serious subject to background separation. Focusing on the background at two hundred millimeters yields an interesting and rather pleasing result, while focusing on the foreground it throws everything in the background completely out of focus. Okay, so that's it. So what we've covered is uh, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, uh, focal length, and also focus point, and the impact that that has on your photos. Because everything in photography is a delicate balance between uh, exposure, sharpness, and uh, to a lesser extent, freezing movement in the subject, every time you alter one thing, it impacts one or more other things. For example, if you set your shutter speed to a very high shutter speed, say like 5,000th of a second or something like that, well then, unless you're in a really brightly lit area, your ISO is going to have to come up in order to be able to record an image that's correctly exposed. And or your shutter speed, uh, sorry, and or your aperture is gonna have to be opened up as wide as possible to be able to let enough light in onto that sensor. If that can't let enough light in, then you're gonna to have to bump up the ISO to be able to compensate and be able to freeze the action at 5,000th of a second, for example, and still get a correct exposure. Likewise, if you set an aperture that is very wide, say f1.8, like I had on my 50 mil lens, um, because you wanna blur out the background or you wanna blur out the foreground, but it's a brightly lit day, well then getting down to your base ISO, the lowest ISO setting on your camera, which for many people is 100 ISO, for some it's 64, well then, you may still have too much light coming in to the sensor, in which case then your shutter speed is gonna to have to go up to be able to shorten the amount of time that light is allowed to hit that sensor. So you might wanna, for example, have, I don't know, say you wanna photograph a tree and you want some branches in the foreground that are blowing in the breeze to be nice and um, moving through the image. You want a nice sort of streaking look or you want streaking clouds, um, but you also want very little of the image in focus. You want just one part of it in focus. So you've set a very wide aperture. Uh, it may not be possible to get those two things together because even when you get your ISO down to its lowest level, 100 ISO, there still might be too much light coming in. And that's when things like the neutral density filter that I mentioned before come into play, but that's for another video. Um, and onto ISO, as you saw with ISO, ISO, um, gets impacted by the other two to an extent, aperture and shutter speed. But if, for example, you want to have the lowest ISO possible so that you get the least amount of digital noise or grain in your photo, so you want to set everything always to, all your images to 100 ISO, well, you might be in a situation, say, in a dark forest, like I was photographing here, where there is just simply not enough light to be able to freeze the movement of the leaves, for example. Maybe you don't want them blowing in the breeze. Maybe you're photographing water uh, and often waterfalls are in little dark gullies and you don't want a shutter speed of say a whole second or three seconds or 10 seconds because then everything just gets too milky and too blurry and just becomes like a white blob. Um, 
moving water is best usually photographed at somewhere between half a second and a second, a quarter of a second and a second, to be able to get that sort of nice milky look without the whole thing just turning to a white blob. You still get some texture and some streaks in the water. Um, when you have a very wide lens, say a 14mm lens, then it tends to do a better job of getting more of the image in focus. It has more depth of field. So you might be able to shoot at say f8 or f11 and get everything from the foreground to the background in focus, depending on how far away the foreground is from your lens. Um, conversely, if you shoot at say, I don't know, 200 mil, like I did with the 70 to 200, then very little of your image is in focus. Even if you shoot at f16, f22, it still doesn't get anywhere near as much depth of field, as much of the image in focus as what a 14 mil or a 50 mil will. So everything is a compromise, um, but that's what kind of makes photography interesting, is learning what your priorities are. I've actually got a free download, which you'll see in the description, um, on the main things that you need to get right when you set up a photo. And it all comes down to setting a priority. It comes down to, okay, what's the most important here? Do I want to get everything in focus? Do I want to get maximum um, detail? the lowest amount of digital noise and grain? Do I need to freeze some action or do I need to create some blur in the image like a waterfall or you want moving leaves? This simple uh, download helps you to decide then based on what your priorities are, and there's usually two, um, it helps you to decide which settings to focus on first. So I highly encourage you to download that. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. You're not gonna get bombarded with emails from me trying to sell your crap. In fact, uh, people have downloaded this and given their email address to do it six months ago and they still haven't got an email from me other than that download, that, that uh, free download. So you're not going to get hassled by me, I can guarantee you that. I'm just too busy um, and I've got nothing to sell you anyway. So uh, hopefully this has been useful. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, I, like I said, I know there are a ton of other things to get right in photography, but I really think these are the five key technical aspects of your camera and using your camera that you need to get comfortable with if you want to become a really competent photographer. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you again next week. Bye.